Today I'm going to be showing you all the full client onboarding process from getting their website set up to the automations and everything in between. The account I'll be setting up in this video is for a high school kid in my neighborhood named Connor. He owns a mobile car detailing business and he detailed our car a few months ago and did an amazing job. And so I'm going to be setting him an account up for free, but this will be the exact same process if it were a paying client as well. All right, so I'm jumping into my agency account and high level. We're going to go to the sub accounts tab and first we need to create a sub account for Connor and his business. So I'm gonna click right here, create sub account. I'm gonna do this from scratch. You could do this with a snapshot if you guys have a snapshot for this niche specifically for car detailing, but I'm just gonna do a normal snapshot for now. I'm just gonna make this a regular account for now as well. If it's a customer, you're gonna be doing a SaaS account, but since I'm gonna be giving this to Connor for free and I'm also gonna be setting everything up first before I give him access to it, we can just make it a regular account for now and later on we can still convert it to a SaaS account. I'm just going to leave it as a regular account though for now. But if your client is like ready to sign in and you've got everything set up and it's ready to go inside of a snapshot, you could just do SaaS account right here. But anyway, I'm going to create regular. I'm going to go from a blank snapshot here. We're going to type in the address. I don't know his address. So I'm just going to do one, two, three Elm Street. This really doesn't matter too much. And then we will go to filling in his information. I'm going to put in Connor. I don't even know his last name. I think his last name is like Muggleston or something. So I'm just going to do Muggs because he goes by CMug on his Instagram. And then we're going to put in his email here, which I have here in a text message. And then his business name is called Muggs Mobile Detailing detailing and then street address we'll just leave the same city um, doesn't matter doesn't matter we're gonna do phone number I'll put in his phone number right here if you guys need your car detailed go ahead and text him this is the number that he uses his cell phone which we're gonna set up a go high level number for him and uh, I think I messed that up we're gonna set up a go high level number for him and so he's gonna have a go high level phone number and that he can use from here on out so he doesn't have to use his cell phone number but uh, anyway, we are going to buy the domain mugsmobiledetailing.com. Hopefully it's available on GoDaddy when we check that out. And then time zone. This will be important to make sure they have the correct time zone because this will populate the calendar times and everything. So if you have the wrong time zone, it can mess up your calendar booking. So I'm going to click save right here. And then this will automatically create the sub account. Now we can go and switch into our sub account right here. And then first off, we are gonna build a landing page for Connor where his clients and his leads can go and book appointments with him right on the calendar. Right now he has it done all through his phone. He's just like booking them through text. And so he doesn't have like a calendar system in place. So that's the first thing we're gonna kind of do is set up that landing page. We're not gonna set up a full blown website or anything like that. He doesn't need anything to that extent, but we're gonna go down to sites and then we'll just create him a small website with like a home page and then a thank you page after they book. And so we're going to click new website. I'm going to go from templates and see if there's any good uh, car detailing templates. I'm going to type that in here and we'll see if there are any good ones. Maybe we could use one of these. Let's go with, I don't know, we'll go with this guy right here. And then it should take us right into our website builder here where we can start playing around with it. I'm gonna go back out of the website builder here for a second and I'm gonna delete any of the other pages of the site that we don't need just so people don't accidentally get to a page that's not live or not active. So here's the website right here, car detailing template that we're gonna be using. Um, we don't really need the contact us page. Uh, we'll just do everything on a home page and then a thank you page. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete these pages right here. I'm gonna copy this so I can just paste it into the other ones. So contact us, we don't need calendar. We don't really need either, or we already deleted the calendar page. Contact us, we don't need we're just going to do home page, which will have the calendar on it, by the way. So we're just going to do a simple two step funnel, essentially, but we're going to make it a website. Thank you. Multi purpose page. We can go ahead and delete. And then link in bio. We could keep that page, but Connor doesn't really have any other social platforms. He just has Instagram that he uses mainly. 
So we'll go ahead and delete this page as well. All right, so now we just have our home page, thank you page. We're gonna go to the home page first, and then we can see the template looks decent. Um, we're just gonna keep this stock image for now. You could obviously change this out for your client if needed, but we don't have any images uh, for Connor. He'll have to send me some of those later on. So I'm just gonna leave this the same for now. Mugs Mobile Detailing will go right here. So we would just click here and I'd go down here and I'd switch out the logo with his logo, which I also don't have. So I'm gonna leave that for now. Um, schedule an appointment, we can delete that button or we can make that button scroll to a lower part of the page. So we could do like scroll to element and then we can select an element here in a minute once we add in our calendar. But basically, you know, we could change some of the text around. I'll go ahead and change this to like top mobile car detailing in South East Idaho. And then we could put in some text here at your company name or at our company name. You know, let me just change that out at mugs mobile detailing or not just in the business of car detailing blah 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 get a free car wash we'll delete that because that's not our call to action um, and we can literally just put down right here exterior detailing interior detailing full detailing package i'd say a calendar should probably go towards the top we'll just put the calendar right here towards the top next to the headline headline Revive your vehicle, showroom, shine. I like that, we'll keep that for now. And then we could use some sort of headline here. Rediscover the brilliance of your car's finish without with our expert detailing services in South East Idaho. We, I'll change this all later, but ultimately you'll wanna use some keyword research. I use a software called Search Atlas, which looks like this. And so I could type in car detailing Idaho Falls, which is the area that we're located in. Click search, and then it'll find how difficult that keyword is. Car detailing Idaho Falls looks like it has 720 average monthly searches. It's a really easy keyword to rank for. We can click down here under related keywords and we can see some other ones. I'm gonna click view all, and we can see their keyword difficulty, how much search volume they get monthly on Google and different search engines. Auto detailing Idaho Falls looks like the one. Auto detailing Idaho Falls, Idaho. Idaho car detailing Idaho Falls. So any of these are fine. We just wanna kind of enrich our website with this keyword if this is what we're trying to rank the website for for SEO. So we can have some good on-page SEO and get ranked for these specific keywords. So anyway, the keyword difficulty is really easy. This is out of 100, so three is nothing. This is a really easy keyword to rank for, so not a ton of competition, but anyway. We're gonna enrich the site with those keywords and then also we're gonna put on our calendar right here. So first we need to go create our calendar. I'm gonna save this really quick, just a couple of the changes we made. I'm not gonna do the full setup right here with like the full blown website and everything. That would take way too long for this video. We're gonna go back, we're gonna to go to calendars and we're gonna to go to calendar settings because we need to create our first calendar in the sub account. I am going to do a simple calendar because Connor doesn't really have any team members, so he wouldn't really need a service calendar. Um, it's just Connor. So he, we're going to just do a simple calendar. Calendar name is going to be Mugs uh, Mobile Detailing Appointment. And then we are going to add our custom end to our link at the slug right here. It's just going to be mugs mobile detailing let's see d detailing and we'll just leave it at that if your slug doesn't work whenever you put it in here just make sure to change it to something else because it's using other go high level accounts and if somebody else in another go high level account has the same slug or custom url on the end of their calendar it won't let you create it and so you have to use a different one so just be creative there with that one this is gonna be the end of our calendar link, which we won't really use because we're gonna embed the calendar on the website. Um, meeting duration, I'd say, well, these are probably gonna be like, I don't know, we'll do two hour slots for him just in case. Sometimes it might take a little bit longer, sometimes shorter, but just in case he doesn't have multiple bookings in, in one two hour spot. We'll do Monday through Saturday for him. We can change this later based on his preferences. And then we'll do like, I don't know, 
8 a.m. and then we'll do to we'll do 5 p.m. and leave it there. Meeting location and uh, we'll just say your home and then under the advanced settings we can go and we can configure the calendar a little bit more. We can put a calendar logo for our client right here, a description, uh, we can put it into a calendar group. If he has multiple different types of detailing services, we could create a multiple different types of calendars for one for like an advanced detail, one for a basic detail, one for a exterior wash plus detail. He has different services that are different prices. Well, I think Connor just has one package though. That's the same cost for everybody that he offers. And so we're just gonna leave it at this calendar for now. And then availability, you can get more detailed with it in specific times on specific days. So I'll correspond this with Connor and figure out what his availability is here. And then minimum scheduling notice, we'll do like one day. They can book like one for the next day, basically. Date range, we'll give them like 30 days out that they can book. Maximum bookings per day, we'll do like five. I don't think Connor's doing too, too many, but I think five would be plenty. And I would fill his whole day if they take two hours each on average. Uh, maximum bookings per slot, we're just gonna do one, allow one person to book one two hour slot. And then we are going to, or meeting intervals, I forgot we need to make those two hours. Meeting intervals here, we need to make two hours because that's the same as the meeting duration. And then pre-buffer time, post-buffer time, we can leave blank there. And then forms and payment, we can just collect first name, last name, email, phone number, so we can just keep this default form. If we wanna use a different go high level form that we built out, we can change it out there and select from our different forms here. Shouldn't do the default one. I confirm that I wanna receive content from this company using any contact info I provide. Perfect, everything should be good here. And then we can also, if Connor has a Stripe account, we can connect and accept payment on this booking. So it'll actually charge his clients right as they book. So they don't, he doesn't have to collect payment after he's done. I think Connor prefers to collect it after he's done the job instead of before. So we're just gonna leave that off. But you'd go into your payment tab. I'll show you real quick. So we go over to our payment tab to do that. So we go to our payments then we'd click integrate uh, or go to integrations and we just integrate our payment gateway stripe is usually the most common one or paypal and you can integrate those accounts and then you can start collecting payments under the calendars by default you can't yet until you connect the payment process then you can toggle that switch on so you can start collecting payments on bookings but now that we have that calendar we can go back to our website that we were building out for connor and then we can click we'll just go to edit this home page where we're going to put that calendar and we're going to put it towards the top of the page here i'm going to click add element and then we're going to scroll down over here where it says calendar mugs mobile that's the calendar we just created and it looks like this i don't like how tall the calendar is so i think we can go back and change it to classic mode which makes it like a smaller looking calendar so i'm going to save this really quick and then we're going to go back out once this saves Going to go back to calendars calendar settings and if you want to change the look of your calendar there's two different options there's that which is called the neo widget and that's it looks kind of a little bit taller and more modern looking but we can also go to customizations and change it to our classic widget which i think will make that section not as long at the top in our hero section so i'm going to save this now and then we can go back to our website once this is saved to classic so that just changed the look of our calendar and I'll show you what it looks like here. We'll go back to sites, websites, car detailing, homepage. And then it looks like this. So it's a little bit just smaller, more compact, has the time zone the person can select from the dates. And then on the second half, they can pick their time and then fill in their information and book the appointment. I'll show you what it looks like right here. I'll preview it for you. But yeah, so pick the date, and then you can select from the different times, 8, 12, 10, 2, and then select date, or I'll select this one. And then they put in their first name, last name, phone number, email, and they book the appointment. So anyway, we're setting up the website now. One thing we're going to do next is we're going to hook up a phone number for Connor so that he can send out automated text messages 
and emails to his clients so that they can send out reminder texts and things like that before the appointment starts so people don't forget about the appointments they booked with them. And so one thing we need for that, uh, we're going to take, I'm just going to take this uh, menu up here off because we don't really need it. I'm going to put his logo there later, change the colors around to his business so we could, you know, he's got like a yellow color that he uses for his business. We could change it to that. But we'll put his logo here later. Schedule an appointment right here. We can make it scroll, but we have the calendar at the top anyway, so we don't really need that button anymore because it's like right here as the page loads anyway. Um, so right here, obviously logo, things like that. We can change around this later, but basic website. And then whenever they book, we can select this and then the redirect action, we'll just go to website URL and we can go to, or we'll go to, and then we can put in, once we connect his domain here, we can put in uh, the thank you page as the redirect. So we'll do that here in a sec. This could be done as a funnel too. I just did it as a website because most of y'all are probably building websites for your clients, but we could have done it as a funnel and it would have been maybe a little bit easier, but it's all right. And then the thank you page, we'll just leave the same, but we can edit whatever we want on the thank you page to make it match the home page. And one thing we do need to add as well, I'm gonna duplicate this thank you page because whenever we get that phone number for Connor, we need a privacy policy and terms and conditions page on his site or else the A2P number will not get approved. We have to tell A2P how that number is gonna be used and how that person's contact info is gonna be used. And so we have to have that terms and conditions and privacy policy. I'm gonna clone this home page right here. We're just gonna clone it in this website. Cloning pages is really easy. You know, it makes it the process of building out your websites a lot faster. So you don't have to build a whole new page from scratch and you already have like the theme of the other page that you cloned. I'm gonna rename this page, go to settings. We'll rename this one a privacy policy and terms and conditions. And then path, we'll just do like, I don't know, privacy policy, update that page. And then we'll go in and I'll show you where you're gonna get that privacy policy and terms and conditions page. So if we go under websites and then we go to, we just need to hit the back button right here, go to the main website settings right here, go to new website, go to from templates, hit continue. And then right here, type in SAS. We can select this template. We don't need to actually continue and click on it, but we're gonna go to the bottom of it has a privacy policy and a terms and conditions page already set up for us. And so what we can do is we can just copy this privacy policy, or this is the, I think, terms and conditions, and it has everything already put in for us perfectly. I'm gonna copy that. We're gonna go back here. We're gonna open up our privacy policy and terms and conditions page. Like I said before, this is needed. You will not get A2P approved to start sending text messages if you don't do this step. And so I'm just gonna call this like uh, privacy, uh, privacy policy and terms and conditions. And then I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna just delete this stuff here. We don't need all this. And I'll just go ahead and put that text right in here. So we're gonna add an element and I'll just add a like, I don't know, We'll do a headline first. We'll call this one terms and conditions. And then below it, we could do a paragraph. And then I can go ahead and paste all that in. Makes it really long, but it doesn't matter. No one's really ever gonna see this page unless they click through to it. But we're gonna go ahead, we'll delete all this stuff up here. Schedule an appointment, we'll just put the logo there, change all the colors around. But terms and conditions we've got now, we can add another headline below this. And we'll add some spacing here, some margin. And we'll call this one privacy policy. So I think this one was the terms and conditions. And then down below this, we can add our paragraph again. I'm going to save this real quick because I need to go back out and get that privacy policy from that SAS template. So we're going to go back out new website from templates. Remember, we're gonna look at that SAS template. That one has a good privacy policy and terms and conditions. Scroll down to the bottom of it. 
and we'll click privacy policy now and we'll copy the privacy policy well I already have the title so I'm gonna just copy from here right here exit out of here go back into our site go back into our privacy policy and terms and conditions page and then we're just gonna paste this in right here good deal now we've got everything we need there and then we need to save this I'm gonna go back to our homepage and make sure the footer has the ability to get and navigate to that privacy policy and terms and conditions page um, down here you can add that in somewhere so I'm gonna go ahead and add it I don't know right here for example and then I'm gonna do a well, I'm just gonna duplicate this make this a let's see we'll just rename it here to be terms and conditions slash privacy policy and then we can save that real quick and then for button actions we can make it go to so where it says button actions down here we can say go to page and then we can make it go to our privacy policy and terms and conditions page just like that so now that should work so if we preview it real quick just to make sure because a2p is really strict about the privacy policy and terms and conditions we need to make sure that we have that there we're just going to go down and try it out and we click on it boom comes to our terms and conditions privacy policy um, i'm going to go back and i'm going to go to that page again and delete that paragraph at the top that's not really needed delete this one and we can we could even delete this whole section right here it could literally just be the privacy policy in terms and conditions just like this it's really all we need um we can make it a white page whatever color you want doesn't really matter and then we also need to go back here and now that we have that we can go and we can get a2p verified so we've got the calendar where his appointments can be booked um, well next before we do the A2P we need to get a domain for him so we're gonna go to godaddy.com and we need to buy the mugsmobiledetailing.com domain so we'll go ahead and try that mugsmobiledetailing.com well yeah looks like it's available we're gonna make it ours Go ahead and pay for it. I'm gonna pay for all this just through the video right here. All right, so I just bought that domain. Now we're gonna hook it up to the website. One other thing I was wanting to do, I think this is pretty cool, and you guys could use it for your clients and their websites, is a Instagram embed code. So we can embed their Instagram and it'll like update and populate the pictures that they post on Instagram. I thought this would be cool because Connor does a lot on Instagram. And so I'm just gonna delete this section right here and we'll replace it with a code right here because we can't do Instagram natively inside of go high level it doesn't really work we can do an image slider if we have the images but I think his Instagram is pretty cool it's got some cool photos and videos and so we added in our code right here now we're gonna go to a site called elfsite.com and once you get there, you need to create a free account. Once you create the free account with your Google or Facebook page or whatever, you can click right here where it says Instagram feed. And we can paste our Instagram feed just like this onto our site or our funnels. I'm just going to do this one. There's a couple different variations of it you can select from and stuff, but I'm just going to do this one and hit continue. And then you just need to type in the Instagram handle and select this one right here. I'm gonna go back, it made me redirect. But anyway, you'll go in here and you'll paste in the Instagram handle right here. It's gonna make me pay for another one because I already did this one earlier. And you have to pay for their paid account, like $5 a month if you wanna do multiple of these. But anyway, I already did one, so I'm gonna go back out. And I already have mine. Let's see where it's at. All 
I already have mine right here. I'm gonna click install and I'm gonna copy the code. I'm gonna jump back into my website right here. I'm gonna go over to the right when I have this selected, this custom code I added in, open code editor. I'm just gonna paste that in right there, hit save. It's not gonna show it in preview mode, but if I save it really quick and then I, or it's not gonna show it in editing mode. If I save it and then we click preview, now you'll be able to see Connor's Instagram feed right here. And so he can show off some of the cool cars that he's, you know, detailed and done some befores and afters and things like that. And then click on it, it'll open up right into his Instagram page, which is cool. So anyway, we've got this here, um, revive your vehicle, showroom shine. Um, we could just, instead there, we could just type in like book an appointment or something. Book your detailing appointment today and I'll make this look better later obviously save this and then we're going to connect our domain so we're gonna go back out here's our website we need to go down to settings we need to go to domains we need to add a domain. We're going to type in right here mugsmobiledetailing.com, which is the domain that I just bought on GoDaddy. We're going to hit continue. Make sure this is checked and toggled on because it'll do it automatically for us. If we have a GoDaddy domain or Google domain or any of the popular domain providers, hosting or I'm just going to click authorize. So it's basically Go High Levels asking my GoDaddy account permission to update some DNS records for me on my behalf. I'm going to click connect and let it do its thing. Close. And it'll take about 30 seconds to authorize. Okay, now it's authorized. Now it's going to ask us which funnel or website we want to connect it to. I'm just going to select our car detailing one we've been working on. The default step, I'm going to select the home page. And then the additional 404 error page, I'll just have it go to home as well. Click link domain. And this will link our new domain here to our website. And so if we go back, go down to sites, go to our car detailing website, make sure just click on settings right here. Just make sure it's updated here and looks like we're good to go there. And then we should be able to just click and type in in a new browser, mugsmobiledetailing.com. Pops up with our funnel here that we built out has the Instagram widget here and some other information that we can update later. But basically at the bottom, we just wanna make sure we've got our privacy policy terms and conditions, which updated on the on the homepage and it has a pop-up still. We'll go ahead and edit that pop-up, make that go away real quick. So we're gonna to go to our homepage and then up at the pop-up right here, or it's gonna be this one. We'll go to pop-up settings and we'll just go ahead and disable the pop-up. We don't want that coming up. I don't really need it. Another thing was the privacy policy and terms and conditions page was, I think it's a global section. So if we go up here and we go to global sections, um, we're just gonna make this section right here. Uh, we're gonna turn them off on all of them. We don't really need any of these sections to be global, which means if you edit it on one page, it'll change it on all the other pages. Cause now we don't want this terms and conditions page on this home page where we just want it on the actual terms and conditions page and so anyway we completely update the site to his brand which we haven't done fully but we will do that later and then i'm going to go back out of here now that we got the domain hooked up to this we've got the privacy policy terms and conditions page we can then go to a2p so i'm going to go down to the phone numbers tab right here and then we're gonna go back up to our trust center and we're gonna go ahead and start registering now. It says, is this business entity you're registering located in the US or Canada? Yes. And then I'm gonna say, no, the business I'm registering does not have a tax ID because Connor doesn't have like a legal LLC or anything like that. Business name, mugs, mobile, detailing. We're gonna continue, United States, state, Providence. Uh, we're just gonna actually change this now back to Idaho. I don't know Connor's exact address, but must have skipped it, there it is. I don't know his exact address, but I'm just gonna, I'll just use my address, doesn't really matter. Gonna continue, first name, 
Connor, last name, Muggs. Make sure this is all accurate for you, right? But um, email address, which I have here, let me pull that up. Okay, and then phone number. Just put in your cell phone number right here. All right, job position, we'll just do like CEO, continue. We just need to do both of these here. Select this, acknowledge that you're gonna be charged $20 fee. Brand name, we'll do mugs, mobile, detailing, like that. Business industry, um, let's see if we can find which one it would be. Uh, there's usually not a ton of options here. Um, I'm just gonna do I don't know, hospitality, doesn't really matter. Phone number, I'm gonna do this again, put in Connor's phone number here. Text him if you guys are in Southeast Idaho and wanna get a detail done. He'll do a great job for a really good price. Um, sole proprietor, that's what he'd be. Use case descriptions. Um, we can just see the examples right here. We can copy these ones. Just gonna copy this one. This campaign sends appointment information, confirmation reminders to customers once they booked appointments on with us on our, our website. And then I'm gonna paste in the link to the website so that A2P can see that we have everything that we need and opt in to receive promotional and SMS notifications from Mugs Mobile Detailing. So we're basically just filling in the information here because they put in like filler text and stuff. So you need to put in your business information wherever is necessary. Sample message one, we're just gonna copy this one here. Um, must include lead name, your name, business name, and opt-out language. So I think some of these don't have everything. So it says, hi, John, this is, and then we'll put in Connor from, and then Mugs Mobile Detailing. Our appointment, blah, blah, blah. Please reach out to this number because we're texting them right so this number in case you need to reschedule reply stop done subscribe so that one's good sample message two we're going to do the same thing we'll use this one make sure it says hello we need to put the leads name right so hello john this is and then we need to put connor's name c-o-n-e-r um and then we need to tell who we're with with mugs mobile detailing so it has to have lead name, your name, as the business owner, and the business name, and opt-out language. We are confirming your appointment for tomorrow at 9 a.m. Please reply, stop to cancel. Perfect. And then this message will include an embedded link. Not usually. Message include age gated. No, message will include phone numbers, potentially. We'll just leave these two checked, the top two. Hit continue. Um, how do leads contact consent to receive messages? We're just gonna copy this sample right here. End users opt in by visiting. Um, we're gonna put in our website domain here again. Oh no, I just messed that up. We're gonna redo this. I'm gonna paste, copy this again. I actually just double pasted it. I forgot I still didn't have this copied to my clipboard. Copy the website real quick. Go ahead and paste that in right here. And then, and filling in their details, users check a box to receive notifications and promotional messages to provide their consent. Additionally, end users can also text start to our, I'll just put our number because we don't really have a go high level number yet, so I don't want to put a fake one in there. So we might get flagged. All right, that should be good. And then opt in, op, opt in message. We'll just copy this one. You have successfully opted in to receive notification and promotional SMS from, and then we'll put in Mugs Mobile Detail link. Please reply stop if you need to opt out in the future, and we'll go ahead and submit that. So we've done everything. We've got the website set up. We've got the privacy policy terms and conditions page. 
everything should go through. It's going to take a little bit of time. This will say approved first, and then a couple days later, the campaign will also get approved, and then we'll be able to send text messages. I'm going to show you real quick. We'll go ahead and get a phone number. I'm going to go to right here, manage numbers, add phone number, and we can get Connor a local phone number because he's here in Idaho with me. Um, we could do go to filters. We can go type in 208 since that's our area code. We'll do first part of number and then click apply. Hopefully there's some 208 numbers. Uh, sometimes Twilio doesn't have numbers for specific areas and so you have to pick a different area. But there's tons of 208 numbers it looks like. We'll just do, I don't know. I wish there was one for Rigby. We can try refreshing and see if there's one for Rigby. If not, we can just pick one from like Pocatello because that's pretty close to where we're at. Or I wish there was one for Idaho Falls maybe. Um, uh, we'll just do Pocatello. This one's easy enough. Phone numbers are $1.15 per month, and then you have to pay for the text messages and the calls that you make with it, obviously. But now we have the number. Now we just have to wait for A2P, and, and once it's approved, it'll say A2P verified next to our number. Then we can start texting, um, but at least we have the phone number set up now. And now uh, we can also create an email sending domain for Connor so he can send out email reminders and stuff when people book appointments. So we're going to go down to email services right here. Um, we're going to create a dedicated domain like it's saying. We're going to put in Connor, or we'll just do uh, appointments dot, and then put in your domain mugs, mobile detailing com, whatever domain. You can put whatever word you want on the front. It doesn't have to be appointments. It could be like info or whatever. I'm just going to click add and verify. And we'll let Go High Level do its thing. Um, we're just going to hit continue here. And we already gave it permissions to our GoDaddy account. And so it'll create all these records for us. Normally, you'd have to create five different DNS records. But GoDaddy will go ahead and put it all in for us if we give it permission. We're going to go ahead and close that. And then we just have to wait usually 30 seconds to a minute for all these to update. And then you just have to click verify domain again. Um, it looks like it, they haven't been updated yet inside of our GoDaddy account, which is fine. Like I said, it could take up to a minute. So I'll go ahead and wait on that and we'll try verifying it after we've waited. All right, so now we've waited and it looks like most of them were verified. I think these are really all the ones that we need. This TXT down here, we don't necessarily need, but we'll just click verify. And it should redirect us back out of here. Um, and it still says SSL unknown. So we're going to go back, click here, click verify domain, go back in, see if it's all good now. We're going to click verify domain again. doesn't let you do it multiple times, which is kind of stupid. So you just have to go back out, click this again, verify domain again, verify here. And then still saying some of them aren't verified. We're going to try it again. Looks like all of them are verified. Click it. It should redirect you. There we go. Now it's redirected. Now it says SSL pending. Um, and we, we want it to say SSL verified right here. So let's verify it one more time. Oh, it's like finicky. It's like some of them are cutting out. Some of them are in. This will happen occasionally. So let's try it back. SSL unknown, we're going to verify it again, verify, it's still not working, I wish we could click verify multiple times there, we just have to keep going back in and out, oh man, what the heck, sometimes, like, so, like I said, sometimes it does this, uh, we just have to go back in and out a few times, verify, oh, now this one toggled off, it's like it's not populating perfectly inside of GoDaddy for some reason. There we go. All right, now finally we've got the SSL issue. That means our deliverability is going to be better with our email that we just created. So now Connor has his own email that we can send those reminder emails out from and his own dedicated sending domain. By default, you don't have to set this up, but we set this up because so each of your clients can have their own email sending domain. They don't have to use yours and they can exhaust yours. If they use send a bunch of emails, they can actually hurt your email domain that you use for your agency. And so you don't want that. This is why we set up theirs for them. So now we've got the phone system set up for the most part, right? The A2P is still registering and verifying. I got the email set up. Um, now what we're gonna do is we can go in and we can integrate any of Connor's like social media profiles, that kind of thing. I'm not gonna do it in this video, but this is something you would do for your clients. 
I don't have Connor's Google account right here, so we can't really connect that. I don't have his password and stuff. Um, I can do that with him later, but you can sign in here. It'll prompt you to just like put in the information, email, password, and log in, and then it will connect it automatically. Same with Facebook and Instagram. If you click connect here, it'll just prompt you to log into your Facebook account, I believe. Um, once this loads, we'll see. Yeah, it'll just ask you to like log into your Facebook account and, and connect the pages. Mine's already connected here for some reason. We can just, but we would connect Connor's obviously. Uh, he has an Instagram account, but he doesn't have a Facebook page, I don't think, for his business. And then if he has a Stripe account, we could connect that so he can process payments when people book on his website for appointments. Those are really the main ones that he'd want to connect for the most part. And then also another thing you could do is you could integrate his calendar. So once you integrate his Google, if he has, if he has a Google calendar that he wants to hook up to the Go High Level calendar, you can go to calendars to the calendar that we set up for him earlier for his detailing appointments. We could click um, connections up here actually. And then we could go to this and we could select his one of his Google calendars to sync it up to the Go High Level calendar. So anything we book in the Go High Level calendar will show up on his Google calendar. Anything we book on Google will also show up in Go High Level and it'll block off spots on both of them and sync up streamless, uh, seamlessly. So anyway, that's how you would do that. And so those are the integrations that you would need to make. You can also do some of those through the launch pad right here. The main one too. Google My Business. Connor doesn't have a GMB suite. Um, he's just doing everything word of mouth, which is awesome, and he's crushing it. But if he did have a Google My Business, you can go ahead and connect that here, and it'll prompt him to log into his Google My Business account, whatever Gmail that's connected to, and it'll automatically connect that once you've logged in. Um, one other thing I think I forgot to do, we could go to his website. We could add a chat widget. So we'll go ahead and click the chat widget up here. We can put in Connor's like logo or his face right here. I think that'd be best. I don't have anything like that, so I'll just leave it off for now, but we can make the chat widget however we want for his website. We can click get code, copy the code, then we can go and embed that on his site, which we do under websites. Click on his site, go to settings, and then in this body tracking code right here, we can paste that in and save it. So now if we load Connor's website, once this saves right here, it'll now have the chat widget. I'm gonna reload it. Boom, now he's got the chat widget. So now he can, people can come to his site and if they're not ready to book right away, they can just message him, you know, hey, this is my name, this is my phone number and I have a question about your pricing or whatever it is, they can ask questions and these will go straight into his account, into the conversations tab right here as a lead and a conversation and you can message with them through the number that we're getting A2P verified right now. And he can also do it from his phone on the Lead Connector mobile app, which is Go High Level's white labeled app that people can use to use Go High Level on their phone. Um, another thing we would need to do is set up automation. So what we can do there is we can create an automation for whenever appointments are booked on his calendar so I'm gonna scroll down to, let's do like this one. Um, this one has a bunch of steps. It, it has like quite a few things, but it's based on whenever an appointment is booked, we can then add a filter and specify what it's in calendar, Mugs Mobile Detailing. So we're saying anytime a normal appointment has been confirmed in the Mugs Mobile Detailing calendar, it will trigger this automation. And we'll let this be an allow re-entry, meaning people can do it multiple times. And it'll still send them the automated text and emails and everything, even if they booked multiple detailing jobs with them. So we want to allow people to re-enter through this automation as many times as they book. And then we have a confirmation email where we can say, you know, our from name, from email, and set this all up here and say, hey, this is Connor, or hey, John, this is Connor with Mugs Mobile Detailing. Thanks for booking for... Monday and it already has these custom values in here that we select it that you can select right here So you can choose like appointment start date start date time This will say the date and the time if you use this one So anyway, you can have that that'll email them right away and then 24 hours before the appointment starts We can have another reminder email and this time also send them a text. Hey, John Just a friendly reminder about our appointment is in 24 hours Blah blah blah, and I'll go ahead. And I'll go through this and change the verbiage to match Connor's business later on. But you guys can change this for your clients. And this is a big automation, uh, just to help businesses that are lower ticket booking based businesses. One hour before the appointment, we have a wait step. So one hour before the appointment, it'll send them another email, another text message, 
And then all this extra stuff down here, I'm actually gonna delete. We don't really need all this. This is just in the automation, um, just extra stuff. One hour after the appointment, what you could do if, if your Google business suite is connected, I'm gonna delete this one. I'm gonna delete this one. Um, if your GMB suite is connected and you're trying to get Google reviews after the appointment happens one hour later, or let's say it's maybe we wait like more than that. Let's wait like four hours later, just in case Connor's still there doing the job for whatever reason, we'll do four hours. So we'll wait four hours. Then we can send a Google review request or it's just going to be called review, send review request. And we could send a Google review request through text message to them saying, Hey, this is Connor. Thanks for, you know, do getting uh, booking me for detailing. Um, I'd be honored if you'd leave me a Google review. It really helps my business grow. Or you could do this as a Facebook review too. If you don't have a Google My Business, you have a Facebook page, and you're trying to get reviews on the Facebook page, you could do it as a Facebook review request. He doesn't have one though, so I'm going to delete it. And you can configure what that message says in the Reputation Management tab settings. So I'm going to save this, and I'll show you that real quick. So down in Reputation Management, uh, you would connect your Google business suite first and then it would be connected and then you can go to um, this little link or gear icon and then you can go down and you can configure what the Google review request says. I can't do it because mine's not connected to Google business suite but you could say what you want that message to say whenever it sends out as a text or an email and you could say right here this SMS one this is the email one so you can configure it to say whatever you want and ask for those Google reviews and it'll send the link to them where they can leave that Google review request or that Google review. So anyway, that's the basic setup for your clients. Um, you could also create an opportunity or a pipeline here inside of opportunities, which I'll do um, real quick. We'll just create our first pipeline right here. For some reason it's not loading. Let me go back out. Um, I'll yeah, for some reason it's not working right now, but you could create a pipeline. Connor doesn't really need one, but you can create one that moves people to different stages so we can kind of keep our leads organized and everything for your customers. Um, that's the entire setup for basic, you know, website plus the software. Your clients don't need a ton, just the website, you know, maybe a form on the website, calendar, chat widget, anytime somebody messages on the chat widget. That's one thing I guess I can do too is automation here. We'll create a workflow and we'll just do start from scratch just to make it easier. We also added a chat widget to his site. We don't have a form on his website, so we don't need any automations triggering off of a form, but we can do a chat widget. Um, and if somebody messages him on his chat widget, we can do, it's called customer replied is the trigger event. We need to add a filter. We need to specify that it's reply channel is, and then chat widget. Uh, we could do Let's see, there it is right there. So anytime somebody messages him on his chat widget, we can send a text and we could say something along the lines of, hey, this is Connor with Mugs Mobile Detailing. I'll be with you in a sec. And we could say something like that just to let people know who messaged us on our chat widget that we're here to help, you know, we're just busy right now or whatever, we'll be with you in a minute. And then we could just leave it at that or we could have more follow-up if we wanted to, whatever you want there. And we'll just publish that, save that. Um, another thing, maybe go to settings, allow re-entry. I like most of my automations to allow re-entry and let people go through the automation multiple times if they sent multiple chat widget messages um, on our site and then save that. Once everything's set up, then we can go in and add Connor to the sub account so he can log in and access his conversations, calendars, contacts, see all the leads that he's getting, appointments that have been booked, he can also log in with the same username and password on the mobile app and do everything from his phone. But either way, we're gonna go into our agency account now and we're gonna to go to our SaaS configurator. Um, we have this plan here. Um, I'm not gonna charge Connor because I'm doing this for free for him, but basically you would charge your clients one of your SaaS plans here if you're on the 497 plan. And if you wanna give them a 30 day free trial, cause you hopefully already charged them a setup fee before this, whenever you first landed them, maybe a $2,000, $3,000 setup fee for the whole website and software setup. But now the monthly subscription starts and I like to give my clients a 30 day trial. So I'll click edit here and just make sure the 30 day free trial is on. Once the 30 day free trial is on, 
Um, or if you don't want to give a 30 day free trial, that's fine too. You could charge them the 129 today, um, but I'm going to wait to charge them 30 days later. Then you can go up to your sub accounts tab and I'm going to look for um, mugs, mobile detailing, click on it. So that's one we've been working in. You're going to click SAS right here and then we're going to enable SAS mode. The reason we do this is because SAS mode allows us to bill our clients for any text and emails that they send straight straight to their card. And so we don't want to have to pay for all the texts and emails our clients. And even though they're not very expensive, we just want to let our clients know, hey, you're going to be charged 0 0.008 cents per text and not even one cent per text. And then it's even cheaper for emails. And I always tell my clients, basically, you can send a thousand emails for eight bucks. And most people are totally fine with that. So anyway, we're just going to enable SAS mode so we can rebuild our clients and give them a billing section in their sub account that they can see all their invoices of what they paid us every month. We're going to click create new user. We're going to add in our client or clients as users, mainly just our main client. So I'm going to type in Connor right here. And then um, I'm going to put in email, phone number, all this information for him. Let me find his phone number right here. All right, and then create a password. Cool, cool. And then under user permissions, give them all permissions of whatever you said that they get access to and whatever features you promised them. And under user roles, we'll make him the account admin and then add him to the sub account that you want to add him to. So it's this one right here. And then we'll go ahead and click save. And then it's going to ask you to request your client's payment details, but you've already charged them hopefully for the setup fee when you first landed them on the sales call. And so now you should just be able to click right here, already have this customer in Stripe, and then you can type in their name. Connor, I don't have in Stripe, so like I said, I'm not charging him. Um, but normally you would select this right here. I'm gonna just gonna select myself. I think I have myself in Stripe. Um, I'm just gonna do this one. So you would select yourself here, you would click next. And then you can put the plan that you want to put that person on and so it'd be like the 129 plan which we have a 30-day free trial set on so it won't charge them today it'll charge them 30 days from now but then you'd click confirm and proceed and then it'll add connor's payment info to his sub account so when he logs into his sub account he can see a payment tab under the settings or a billing tab where he can see and download all of his invoices from us as the agency so anyway that's the whole onboarding process right there of getting your client onto the sub account. Whenever you add them in as a user, like we just did, it'll email them and give them access to their username and password so they can log in and a link to click to log in. And then we can put them on the appropriate plan and start charging them or give them a free trial and then start charging them for the monthly subscription. Um, you'll just hit confirm and proceed. I'm not gonna do it because I don't wanna charge myself, but anyway, that's how to get your client fully set up. I apologize for this slow and unedited video, but this is the raw setup of getting a client set up. There's obviously a few more pieces in there like editing the website to make it look better and, and some of the things that I missed just for time's sake. But these are all the things you need to do to get your clients fully set up and onboarded for your agency. If you guys are looking to start a website SaaS business, you can get my free website SaaS masterclass down below. It goes step by step on building websites for clients, how to do it, how to get the software set up, a lot of the stuff I showed in this video. And so you can check that out completely free. And if you haven't started using Go High Level yet, you can get a 30 day free trial down below with my affiliate link. And if you sign up with my link, I'll jump on two free Zoom calls with you every single week, help answer any questions you have, help you grow your agency. And I have over $10,000 worth of resources that I'll give you completely free. And if you've already started using High Level and you wanna upgrade to the 297 or 497 plans, you can do that down below with my link as well. And I'll give you the exact same offer. I appreciate y'all sticking through to the end of this video. I love y'all and I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.